goodness for that, she's back out. Where have you bloody been? This week, we do some odd jobs, including finishing off the roof cladding. Problems and challenges galore with this roof. The aim of the game today is to finish the rest of the cladding and to bring it round to meet the ply and finish that off neatly. So to do this, firstly, I had to sort out the vapour barrier. So I decided actually in the end not to vapour bury the whole van because research just showed that the results were negligible. But I did think it would be a good idea to do the roof because with all the cooking, all the steam was rise. And what I'm doing here is just taping it down to the side of the van, making sure that there's no air can get through. And while I was doing that, Dad was working on the other side of the van, getting it prepped for the cladding. How we're working it is, we're putting wooden blocks on the lower frames because we're wanting the rest of the ceiling to rest on this. We originally were going to put pieces of wood on this, but then it would just bring it out a bit too much. So what we're going to do instead is, as you can see, Dad's putting blocks on here. This is just a touch too thin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue a little bit of ply on there. And that brings it out, you can see, perfectly level to this bar in front. I'm going to use glue and a couple of nails and uh, I'm going to go around after Dad's put them in, attach these on and then the ply should be able to sit and uh, come round okay. That's the aim anyway. So I got to work with that and you'll notice that this side looks a bit different to the other regarding the vapour barrier and I decided here I could actually just tape it to the bit that was there and I didn't need to add an extra layer. It was a bit easier, so that's what I did. And to say that this roof was an easy job would be a flat out lie because my gosh, was it a headache. I mean, you can see how much back and forth there is and we were just working out what was the best way to get them attached properly, where to cut them, where to join them, because not everywhere had a strut for us to attach them on. And I mean, I'll just let you enjoy this for a minute because <laughs> It took some thinking trying to work this out. We did come up with an ingenious idea though. Here you go, look at that. To attach some in awkward places. We were also having to contend with the uneven back of the van and that took a few attempts. I got it. That took me three attempts, but there we go. I'll have to cut out the bit for the window frame now. That looks rather neat, I think. Ah, ah, ah. Not too shabby. This is only a template, so I've got to recut a proper piece now. So it fits all the way along. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. She's back out. Where have you bloody been? It's been cold again. Right, this is 1.8 metre piece. I'm going to rejigs or the template and then in actual fact we're not going to cut a section out where the window is we're just going to cut the whole thing off where the window is so while we do that i'm going to let you enjoy us in live time realizing that the work we've done may not be so good <laughs> right so this is obviously level but yes room, obviously. oh yeah but is that level or does that go down is that going down Looking at the window frame, it's higher at that side than it is at that side, isn't it? Oh well. You know, it all went so smoothly to start with, and now we're getting to these bits, so nothing's level, nothing matches up. At the moment, it looks better without anything on. Here it does, doesn't it? Yeah. You could, we could chamfer the back. Yeah. So it, it goes in. So let's do that. Let's just yeah. Play. First, let me talk to you about Topdon. The Topdon Jump Surge 2000 is a portable battery pack that also has the ability to restart a dead car or van battery. So I'll show you how it works and we're going to get it to restart a dead battery for you. Supporting up to 8 litre petrol and 6 litre diesel engines, this comes with multiple ports for you to charge your items on the go. There is a built-in torch and the jump leads are included and it will also charge your phone to 80% in 35 minutes great thing to have is a just in case. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'll end up helping more people than I'll need it for myself, but I didn't even know these things existed. But the first thing I did when I got this van was replace the battery for the van. Before I added my leisure battery in, I replaced the battery for the van because 
I did get a warning light um, and it said low voltage and things and obviously it's been in the van since it had been bought so I replaced the battery. So what we've done is we've taken out the new battery and put the old battery back in and it is flat because obviously it's been sat for six months so it's got no charge in it. So we're going to boost the old battery. So you see you just place it on top of your battery, attach the positive and negative leads and then you start your ignition. So let's give this a go. <laughs> we have a flat battery. Got 75% on the top, Don. Dad's gonna put them in. Posy, Neggy. Right, try and start. I just need to start it. Yeah. Oh, excuse the wheel lock. Oh my God, I'm a bit scared. Why am I nervous? It means it's not in gear. It's not in gear. So, yeah. Start it. Oh! And, there you go. and that's it. And that's it. Done. What? Job done. Job. That's as easy as it is. That's it. Yeah. Wow. I'm a bit. I'm a bit shook. I'm a bit shook with how easy that was. <laughs> right. I will charge my phone from it, and I'll let you know if that 35 minutes is actually true for the 80%. Um, and if it is, I'm gonna highly recommend this. My goodness. What a great little gadget to have on the road. You can get this from only £70.99p using the link in the description for a limited time only. Now let's get back to the scheduled programming. Dad had to run out and do an errand, so I decided to give Betty a clean. And you can't really tell on this video, but oof, she was filthy. And it was also super warm, so I changed. And then dad returned and we got back to work, trying to figure out how to fit the rest of this cladding. And it's been half a day by this point and we've only fitted that first piece. <laughs> Pencil, there you go. Now then, this is a challenge and a half. Hey, hey, hey. What we're going to do, we've um, fit these, which I've shown you. The first piece fits on there perfectly. We're going to bring it up to the control panel, okay? But you can see how this, this is flat and then it comes all the way out and it's all a bit annoying. I'm going to have cupboards here, okay? So this is going to be hidden behind cupboards. So there is going to be a little bit of exposed metal, but it's not the end of the world, is it? So what dad's doing now is going to cut a piece of wood to fit basically here. And if that piece of wood rests on there one before this little ridge the other one the other side of it then they will join over to these pieces of wood that we've already put on and i think that will give it enough support and then where are we i'll show you this magical piece that dad has cut there check that out he's chamfered that with the jigsaw this last little one's going to go in there and that will then sit flat against the wall. Um, and that's sort of how we're going to finish the roof off. And then I did buy this, which was the edging because the roof bit fits in that square gap perfectly. And this is how we were going to sort of like finish off below the roof to edge. That was the idea, but this piece actually looks nicer. So I think we're going to play around with that. Uh, <laughs> I drop everything! I literally drop everything. Right, um, and then at this bit, on this top bit here, because this is the first piece like covers that, we can't, there's no space. So I might finish off the edging with that under there. But lots of playing around, trying to work out what to do. I mean, that, that's worked very well. We are also going to box this in. This is going to be boxed in because if you can see, that moves it needs to be held up so this this metal section at the back is going to be boxed in as well so the roof's going to come round, and I'm going to use the same stuff to box that in here he is you got them ready There's a much bigger gap in between this one than there is a normal one, but it still works. 
I think, I hope. We'll wait for these to set before we hammer in there. Look at that corner work. Shoom. And this is where we found out this wasn't straight. Look, teeny gap, bigger gap. And you can see how it's chamfered at the back. So now dad's gonna run some corking underneath this bottom bit to edge it off nicely. Well, we've got the corking out. I've done a couple of these corners, which weren't very neat. I've filled in this one that's on the wonk i've filled in this one and there were a couple around the window that weren't exactly perfect so i've filled in the top of that down there down that bottom one and we decided while we had the corking out just to do every little gap we could possibly see to make it all look neat and nice um excuse that corner <laughs> don't even ask <laughs> it'll be fine once it's painted Filled in some screw holes as well and finished off the edge of the cladding above the door. Somehow that's the whole day gone. A few odd jobs. We'll finish off this side of the roof tomorrow. It's a new day. It's the other side of the van. We now know what we're doing. So this should be a breeze, right? Same thing as the other side. We added in those wooden battens with the tiny bits of ply on the top. And again, there was a lot of toing and froing, trying to work out which side piece to cut, then going outside to cut it, then coming back in to mark out the edge of the van, then going out to use the jigsaw, then coming back in to see if it fits, then going to sand it, then bringing it back in. You get the idea. This took far longer than I was ever expecting. We really are at the point of the build now where things are just so fiddly and tricky, it does take a lot of time. So I'm gonna change tact a little bit with my videos and instead of posting a completed job done, it's just going to be the progress we've made that week really because otherwise you'll be waiting three weeks for an episode. <laughs> Problems and challenges galore with this roof. I know it's my own fault because I want it rounded, but it's a bit difficult. I've come across another issue uh, with this end piece of metal here, the tongue of this piece above is resting directly on the metal. So we can't get the groove behind it to connect in, which won't allow us to slide the next layer on. So what dad is going to do is something new again. He's going to cut off the tongue part of the tongue and groove so we can slide it in without having to undo our work. So a couple of practice attempts before the real thing. Look at that. Slide it in and see. So we'll give it a try. We're having to, because it's so tight, we're having to like add it in in space. We've got gaps and then slide it across to make sure it fits. That worked. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, brilliant. Right. Do Fabulous. It, do it on the proper one then. On the one, yeah. Nick will fix it. You got a problem, Nick will fix it. <laughs> Here we go, moment of truth. Come on, come on, come on. Oh yes, you didn't even have to move it above the thing. We made sure to use plenty of glue on this one. And this is actually the first place I was able to use the L-shaped edging to finish it off as well. I'm hoping that there aren't going to be cupboards here, so this is going to be visible. The L-shaped edging fits perfectly into the cladding and I think it looks really nice. Okay, we've done that, we've realised the shower's going to come up to here, so we didn't need it that long. Uh, so many things to think about. <laughs> and that's coming in here. You can see there's a little gap at the back here, and then it runs long and it comes very tight, and that's the glue that's squishing out. So what we're going to try to do now is clamp this, just to pull that out while it sets and maybe get a nail in there. I think that looks quite nice, doesn't it? The ed edging of it. Mini clamp. Yeah. How cute. Hey, guess what? We have another problem. 
<laughs> I feel like this is gonna happen quite often now we're actually building. This piece of wood here, it's done the same as that piece that we've clamped down there. We've checked that out of there. Yeah. And then if it, because at the moment it won't go in. Yeah. If I take that back out yeah. and it slips in. It should slide either side of it. Then we'd be able to slide everything up. Right. And that's the one that's stopping it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. can tell already that's worked. Yeah, it's gone straight in. It's up. gone straight in, yeah. yeah. Right, fabulous, that's right. what you've already done. Make sure it's the right side. The amount of times we have put this tongue and groove in upside down and wasted a piece is just ridiculous now. <laughs> You'd think we would get better as it as time went on, but we're still making that mistake. Mm. You wanna go roll it, roll it on? Roll it on. Roll it on. There we go. Okay, yeah, yeah, good for me. So that is the ceiling done. <laughs> we're not being obnoxious. This is where the shower's going. And we're getting shower board to come up. So there's absolutely no point in trying to work that out yet. We'll, we'll likely have to cut a touch of that off to match it, but that's why that's not covered either. The shower board is going to sort all of that out. So ignore that. For the rest of them. God, it does look so much better with that on at the end, doesn't it? Mm. Nice little curved roof. Just how I wanted it. Oh, look how good she looks. Oh my God, and it's even either side. It's another job well done, if I do say so myself. Thanks for watching. A special thank you to my patrons, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.